What's up fellas, Frank Macaluso here from Garageaholic. Today we're going to be taking a look at both of these turbos on the N54. We're going to be removing them and we're going to be fixing that dreaded wastegate rattle. So I want to try to be as methodical and organized as I can with this video so that you can easily see and browse through it and you can understand exactly what it takes to replace these very noisy wastegate flappers. Today we're going to be removing everything, putting the turbos on the bench, and taking an assessment of what it'll take to rebuild those wastegates. Now that they're sitting on the bench, it's time to take each one of these turbos and remove all the coolant and oil lines and set them aside and make sure that they're separated so you, when you reinstall them with new O-rings and gaskets, you'll know exactly where to put them. So let's do that really quick. <laughs> closer look here at the inside of the turbo as you do in a preliminary inspection you take a look at the fins and you see that the intake fins are uh, are are actually okay there's no um, abrasion abrasion or, or chips off of the fins themselves you want to take a look at the axial play to make sure there's a little bit of axial play allow if you move it up and down that's okay that's normal um, for this age of the turbo and uh, and so that's okay take a look at the other side here Kind of the same thing. Um, you can see the wastegate here. This is all going to get replaced anyway. We'll talk about that next. And then you take a look at the fin inside of here. And you want to make sure that here as well that the the that the fin has good play and no uh, no chunks taken out of it or anything like that. And that's good there. So. <clears throat> Take a look at your coolant passages as well. You can see that the coolant comes in one way and out the other, pretty standard. Oil is very similar. Oil goes inside here and it comes out the other end. Um, I'm actually not sure what's the inlet what the outlet is. Actually, I know for a fact that's the outlet. That's the, uh, it's gravity. So it comes in from, from the high pressure side and it comes out and then it goes down to the oil pan. Um, so, you gotta make sure that there's no dirt inside of here. Um, you can use a magnetic pickup and, and stick it inside of there to make sure that there's no uh, metal fragments that are inside of here that would otherwise cause early wear as well. Now let's take a look at the wastegates. This is the new kit that, that came from uh, ECS tuning. And essentially, this is the pain in the, the, pain in the butt. The, this is the bugger that really needs to be, get removed and is really hard, this is the bushing. This guy essentially sits just like that, and then this guy, just like this, gets welded right on top of that, right? And you need to make sure that you are, are adjusting for the clocking of this assembly when the wastegate is in a fully closed position. What is this going to look like when it's fully closed? When you push this all the way in from the inside, you have to mark on the actual uh, assembly up here where that is going to be located so that when you reinstall this and you tighten this bolt that you're actually tightening it correctly and that if that it's correctly adjusted and I'll show you how to do that as we go through but first in order to remove this and this very rattly wastegate it's terrible uh, this thing is definitely due for a, a, a fix a replacement we got to grind this off we got to peel this back take this guy off and then we and then this wastegate piece inside the flapper wheel just drops right out so 
So the wastegate flapper fell right out of there, okay? This is actually perfect scenario. So before I do any cutting, I wanna make sure that I block off any access to the intake. And I wanna basically just use my cutoff wheel and I wanna cut straight across, not at an angle, not sideways, perfectly straight across. Let's take a look. And you're gonna grind up against this surface, that's okay. Now let's grind it down nice and smooth. Just like that. Nice and smooth. All right, so I covered this turbo up to prevent any uh, metal filings or shavings from getting into the intake side. And we need to drill through here. This is basically a retaining pin that goes in here and locks this in place to prevent it from falling or coming out in any direction. We drill it through, and yes, it's permissible to drill this all the way through to the bit comes out on the other side. Not a problem there. I've done it on the previous turbo builds I've done, and it might do it on here. It depends on how deep I get to go. But you do need to drill just like this. I'm actually deciding, I think I might use a thinner bit here. Okay, I got a smaller bit. Remember, you gotta keep it oiled. Be good to oil it to protect your bits. And let's go to town. I had it on a hammer setting, but I don't know if that's actually gonna be better. Let's keep it on the drill setting. Let's see how that works. Nothing is coming out, jeez Louise. Stand it up. It's getting, it's gonna start to get a little bit messy. All right, that might be better. Let's give it a shot again, huh? I'm not getting anywhere. Nothing. I'm not making any progress. Okay, what I thought was gonna be a really easy drill has actually been very difficult. This is hardened steel. I don't know, what, I think that the pin inside of here is made out of hardened steel. It is really hard. So what I did was I rigged up a, uh, a drill set here where you know I got it, uh, the whole assembly in my vise. I'm gonna cover it with the, uh, the rag. I got a piece of metal here that I'm gonna put underneath for additional support. When you push down on this cantilevered uh, location, it's gonna end up twisting and I don't want it to twist, so that's why I have this piece of metal here to, to kind of kind of even that out. So it's the, I've got the bit coming in squarely into, probably a better view there, right? I got the bit coming squarely into the piece and hopefully the drill press is gonna give it a really nice square hit right straight down into it. Let's give that a shot. No, 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 Alright, back on the vise. You can see I drilled all the way through with a smaller bit. Actually, the bits that I was using before were really crappy. Here, I used a better bit, and actually I poked right through. You can see I poked right through right there. And I think I got all the way through, so now I can commence pushing this pin down um, all the way down through and it'll fall out the side here. So let's give that a shot now. Maybe this isn't as easy as, 
as I thought. This thing really sucks, actually. It's hard, this is hard, and it's finesse, and it's repetitive, and it's just do it over and over and over, and bang, 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 bang. Bang! This thing sucks, man, I, uh, it's frustrating. I thought it would be easy, it's always, you always go in saying, ah, oh, this will be so easy, you always underestimate the amount of work that it takes to do this stuff. All right, I just gotta keep on trying. I'll get it, I know I'm gonna get it, I'm just gonna destroy the whole damn thing in order to get to it. It'll be fun, yeah, it'll be fun. Let's keep on doing it, right? Yeah, let's let out my frustrations from the day, right? From work, from life, from everything else. Let's just go to town, let's just do it. I think I need a 10 pound hammer, that's what I think I need. Now that I used, you know, well, the right bit, this is a cobalt 730 seconds bit going right through. It basically went right through all this. I'm gonna do the second turbo really nice for you in, in a quick, concise uh, video, but I feel much better. I think that this is just gonna push right through. Let's take a look. There you go. Now you kind of take the bushing, set it right in there, make sure that it's nice and level. Give it a little tap. There you go. Now this guy fits perfect. Let's get it from underneath. That's how it's really gonna get installed. Gotta make sure that everything is still free flowing and smooth, which it is, which is good. So now let's reassemble the wastegate assembly and figure out where this thing needs to live. Do you remember what I said about alignment before when I was, before I had removed it, is to mark your line as to when the wastegate valve is fully closed against the turbo? Well, that comes into play here. This is actually not welded yet. This is threaded onto the existing location where it was before on the diaphragm. Set this in place, just like that. And if you just rotate, this is actually just freely rotating about what I'm pushing into a closed wastegate scenario. Push it all the way through, make sure it's seated, hold it, and pack it. And then just tack it and let it go. That's it. It's now placed. Let's take a look down below. You can see there, moves, moves freely. And close wastegate, looks good. And then of course, don't forget to weld in there. All you need is a little tack. Actually, you can see this is kind of see-through now see-through right see the little see the nub right there that's from the, from the bushing all the way inside of there all you need to do is just lay a tiny tack and lay a tiny tiny tack because if you put too much heat into that you're going to end up uh, warping and expanding the bushing to the to the rod interface and it's going to end up binding you don't want that to bind okay let's do a quick tack quick tack tack we tighten the nut, as you can see here, I'm actually going to use this because it's just easier. There we go. And this is complete. Excellent. Now that that's done, let's do it on the other turbo and I'm gonna break it down for you in one minute. Let's do it. Close. Mark. First, remove the wastegate adjusting rod. Second, remove the armature arm from the wastegate assembly and let the wastegate flapper drop down. Third, Drill out that holding pin hardened steel with a cobalt bit. 730 seconds will do fine, but 1564 will do good too. Fourth, 
remove the top shoulder of the bushing and bang it down through with a chisel and hammer. Reinstallation steps. One, reinstall the bushing with a socket and a hammer tapping gently until the shoulder comes up against the turbo. Two, install the wastegate assembly from the bottom up and make sure that it's clocked in the right direction before you do any welding on the armature arm. Third, install the armature arm, push until the wastegate is completely closed and tack weld the armature arm to the wastegate valve assembly. And finally, don't forget to tack on the hole that you drilled for the bushing so that you secure the bushing in place into the exhaust manifold of the turbo. That second turbo was a lot easier than the first one. I guess maybe I just underestimated my own memory and how easier it was at the time, but I forgot a lot about some of the details. And that's something that you guys need to go through as you go through these videos as well and do, th do this yourself is that the details matter. The type of bit that you use, the size of the bit that you use, the way that you uh, align it before you remove everything, that way you know how everything goes when you're done. So that is how you do wastegate rattle repair fix. I'll put the link in the description as to where I got this from. It was only 75 bucks from ECS. They used uh, some other vendor. I forgot who they were called, but um, very good quality parts. This is the second time I've used them. Um, really good quality stuff, and uh, I would use it again. In fact, I could do this again with my eyes closed because that second turbo took me literally 18 minutes from start to finish. Um, so. Uh, I'm really, a, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I got so frustrated before. I just, um, I usually don't get frustrated because there's always a reason for everything. And for me to get frustrated means that I don't understand. And I don't like un not understanding something. So I didn't understand. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I went off the handle like that. I even said an F-bomb. I said the F-bomb. And uh, I'm, I'm really sorry. So um, that's the episode uh, for today on how to do wastegate rattle repair on your uh, N54 turbos. Uh, my name is Frank Macaluso from Garageaholic, and uh, enjoy the next uh, few videos. Hopefully there should be some uh, good educating material there for you. I hope you enjoy, and uh, thank you for, uh, for liking, subscribing, and commenting. And uh, take it easy, guys, huh? Later. <laughs>